Now it's no secret that I'm not the biggest fan of Gutenberg, the WordPress page and block editor, but I've given myself a challenge for the end of this year and moving forward into 2021. What tools can I find out there that make Gutenberg a truly useful tool and ones that you could use to build not only pages and posts, but also an entire website? So what tools make it useful? What plugins and themes can you pair with it? And what opens up a more useful set of options to help you build your websites? In today's video, I'll be starting off with a couple of tools that make a great starting point. Everything I'll cover in today will be 100% free, but moving forward, I will be also looking into pro tools that come with price tags. Now, if you've used Gutenberg yourself, I'm sure you will be familiar with the concept of blocks. Blocks are the foundation tools of building more feature-rich website designs and can be a great way of building a website in a rapid way. However, they are no replacement for being able to build things from scratch. So in this first video, we'll be looking at a couple of tools that make building and structuring your pages a much more straightforward affair. I'll kick things off with the theme I've installed. I'll be using Generate Press Free as it's a lightweight and easy to use theme that works very well with Gutenberg. But the theme here isn't the most important part today. What's more important are the two plugins you'll be using. The first one allows you to easily see the structure of your page, duplicate parts, move things around and much more. Now this lets you use Gutenberg more like the page builders that you may be more used to using, things like Elementor and Divi. So the first tool we're going to take a look at is Block Navigation. Now what this does is it opens up the ability to easily see the hierarchy of all of your Gutenberg blocks. This just makes moving things around, seeing how the structure works, considerably easier. So let's just take a look at how this works and some of the features we have with it. Now, if you're new to Gutenberg, it's a pretty simple idea, but it's not really the most flexible. So what we have are basically block elements. So you can see we've got blocks and patterns. Blocks are basically like a widget in Elementor. They're just individual components that make up part of your page. So things like headings, paragraphs, quotes, and so on. You also have patterns, which are basically just predefined styles. So you could think of these as basic templates. They can be things like buttons up to different sections and so on. So with that being said, if we just take a few elements into our page, so for example, we'll say we put a heading in and there's our heading. So we'll just type in, this is a heading and we want to put a paragraph in. So we'll go underneath, we'll just add in another block and we'll say we'll add a paragraph inside there and we can drop some text in. And finally, let's just do something like add an image in. So we'll drop down, we'll add another block in and this time we'll look for an image. So we'll say we'll choose the image option and we'll just choose the option to upload and we can grab something from a media library or we can just upload a file. So we'll just go with this. So as you can see, it is fairly basic. We have a sort of context set of options available to us on each of these different block elements. And as you can see, they are based upon what type of block it is. So different things for a heading, for paragraph, for images and so on. But when it comes to moving things around, it's really quite basic. All we really have are these up and down arrows, or we can drag blocks around like so. So it's not really the most intuitive, and it's okay if you have a very simple layout. When you get more comprehensive layouts, it does become a little bit awkward. And this is where the block navigation plugin comes really handy. You'll see we have these little four colored lines in the top right hand corner. If we open that up, we now get the block navigation section. And inside there, we have our navigation layout. So what that does is it shows us a hierarchical view. In other words, it shows us from top to bottom all the different widgets that make up our page. And then we can do some other things with these. You'll see we've got the three dots on the right hand side of each of these different blocks and click and we have a load of different options. We can open the block settings, move the block and so on. We can also just drag and drop things around the page as well. So you can see we can reorder these very quickly and easily all done inside this section on the right hand side. You can detach this if you want to, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it on the right-hand side. So really quite simple. Now where this becomes a lot more useful just using Gutenberg is let's just say, for example, we want to group things together. So we'll come into create a group. We'll add that group in, and you can see this is now a group item. And this allows us to group various different blocks together and makes then the editing, the moving and all those kinds of things a lot easier. So you can see now the group sits at the bottom of the structure and everything is sitting above it and outside of the group. So this is where things become a lot easier. We can move down to the top. We can then just indent these into that group. And now we've grouped everything inside the group. 
and we can then close that down and we can make just moving things around, viewing things, editing things a lot easier when we're looking at those groups. So it's really simple to use. And then, like I say, we can simply come in and reorder things inside here. So now we have a much more logical order the heading, the image, and the actual content text. So that's basically what this does. And this is a really simple example. The only other option we have is under the settings section. We can click inside there and you can see this is just to change the color scheme. So if we wanted to change this to something different, we can change that. Nothing really too mind blowing inside there. So that's the first plugin. But like I say, when you use this in conjunction with some other plugins, especially the next one we're going to take a look at, it does make working a lot easier, especially when you can see the structure of your page just becomes a lot easier to work with. Now we've seen how to manage the layout structure and how that makes editing your page a lot easier. We'll move on to the next plugin we'll be using. Now, Generate Blocks has some very useful features that help us get more control over the basic building blocks of the page and opens up some additional and very useful settings to control things like fonts being used, colors, and much more. So let's take a look at some of the things we can do with Generate Blocks. Now Generate Blocks, the free version, gives us some new features that makes working with creating content, laying things out, and getting more comprehensive, more page builder-like layouts inside Gutenberg a lot easier. At the moment, it gives us the container, the grid, the headline, and the button. So we can use these to just get a little bit more creative, and then we can use containers to group things together, grids to make more comprehensive layouts, and we can use all the various different widgets or the various different blocks that we've got as part of Gutenberg and any other sort of extra add-ons you may have included. It just makes the whole organization and laying out of the site a lot easier. So I've gone ahead and installed it, and you can see it's installed and activated. We've got some basic settings inside here where we can choose the CSS. We can choose to have an external file or an inline file. If you have any CSS issues, you could regenerate from here, and you can also sync responsive previews. Other than that, there's nothing more we've already got inside here. Now, at first glance, generate blocks might seem quite basic, only giving us four extra sort of blocks that we can work with, but there's a lot more power underneath the hood than you may first imagine. I've removed everything from our page, and what we're going to do is we're going to come back, and you can see there's our four generate block options. The container, just consider this as being the container for the various different widgets or blocks that you want to use. So things like you can put a grid inside a container, buttons, headings, paragraphs, and so on. It's very similar to the grouping option, but it gives us more control. So the first thing we're gonna do is drop a container into our design. So we'll click on that, and you see this puts what looks pretty much exactly the same as that grouping option. Now what we can do is we can come in and we can start adding extra things in. We also have different options available. You can see we've got the change block type or style. We can click on there and we can choose between columns and groups. We can transform it if we wanted to. Change the alignment to uh, wide width or full width. You can adjust the alignment and then you have extra options inside here with a lot more options. So we say show more options. You can see now on the right hand side we have a ton of options specific to the container. We can control things on desktop, tablet, and mobile. And you can see we can switch between those different devices and we can configure things inside there. We can configure the container, the inner container, the container width, and what element we want to use. So things like divs, sections, headers, footers, and a side, and so on. We can make it full width, and you'll also see we have an absolute boatload of extra options underneath, typography, spacing, colors, and so on. So you can really get a lot more granular. And like I say, if you're coming from a background of working with something like Elementor or Divi or something like that, then you're going to be used to dealing with spacings and background gradients and background images and all those kinds of really super useful things. So you can use this to get a lot more creative in much the same way as you'd be using a normal, more feature-rich page builder. Now in this video, I want to keep it really simple and just show you these tools in their basic form and show you some of the things that they can do. But if you'd like me to create a video showing you how to take the tools that I'm showing you in this video and create a full blown page with it, then let me know in the comment section below. And if enough people are interested, then I'll create a video dedicated to doing just that. Okay, so let's come back to those options on the right hand side in a moment. Let's take a look at what else we can do inside here now. We come back up to our blocks, we can add in a grid inside here if we wanted to. So we can click to add a grid, and then we can choose what kind of layout we want. And you can see, we've got a range of different layers. And again, this is very similar to what you have inside a tool like Elemental. So we could have a full 
full width, we could have two columns, we'd have three columns, four columns, and so on. You can have different offsets then with your column widths. So you can get creative in how you want to lay things out. Let's keep this really, really simple and do something like set this layout here. Now you can see this is sitting outside of our container, outside of what we want it to be. So this is where we can use this in conjunction with our block navigation tool. You can see there's our container and our grid sits outside it. And inside the container, we've got two more containers. So we can lift that up, we can indent that, and now that's placed inside the container. So now we've put that in there and we get all those extra levels of controls. So if we want to now, we can easily come into any of these. We'll select this first container, for example, come to our blocks, and now we can add extra things in. So we can search for what block we want to put inside there and get really creative. So let's start off by building something really, really simple. Let's just add in a heading. We'll add the heading inside there and we'll just drop some text in there and we'll say, this is a heading again. So now what we can do is we can change the H2, H3, H4, so on, make things bold, adjust the alignment, do all those kinds of things. Let's just say we want to set this to be heading one, for example. The alignment, we could say, we could align this to the center, to the right, all those kinds of things that you're used to seeing inside there. Okay, so now we put the headline in, let's just add another element in. This time we're gonna add a paragraph in and we'll just drop some text inside this. I'll just paste that in there. And then finally, we'll just create a button. So we're using a combination of the generate blocks, new sort of blocks, and also the standard Gutenberg blocks. So you can mix and match to your heart's content. There's no problems with that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna change this now to something else and we'll just say download now, and there we go. And then on the right hand side, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a little bit of HTML code and drop in a Lottie animation. So we'll click on add block. We're going to search for HTML. We'll add a HTML block inside there. And now what we can do is we can simply drop in the little bit of code. So we'll click inside there and we'll paste our code in. And there's our little bit of code. And there's our animation. So pretty cool. But nothing you couldn't really do just by using ordinary Gutenberg. So what else is this giving us to make it you know, something that I think is worthwhile checking out and using if you use Gutenberg. Well, this is where generate blocks becomes really useful. When we're using any of the generate blocks blocks, we have all those extra controls. So let's start off with this heading. Let's select the heading and we're just going to switch back out of the sort of navigation, the block navigation and go back to our normal settings. So we'll just disable that, come back to our settings and you can see all those options are now available to us. So we've got our typography. We can change the element, whether we want to set this to H1 through 6, set to a paragraph, to a div, whatever you want to set inside there. But now underneath the typography, we've got a lot more control over the typography itself to what you'd normally have as part of the inbuilt Gutenberg options. So now we can choose the weight, we can choose the uh, transform, so uppercase, lowercase, those kinds of things. But we can open up even more options by, say, show advanced typography. And now we can start to select things like the font. So let's just say we want to use something like Montserrat. And you can see we want to use Google fonts, in which case we can load that in. We can control the size inside here. So we can say, let's have this as something like, let's go for 48. And you see that updates. We can mix and match that now with our transform and say we want that to be uppercase. And we can also say we want the weight to be lighter. So we can say 300, for example. And boom, there you go. We've now just configured all those options. Now, we're not limited to doing this just with the widget. We can also set this with inside the container as well. So if we come back and select the container, so we'll select that from there come back to our options. Now we've got the container selected. As you can see at the top, it tells us that's what the current object that is selected is. Now we can control things inside here. So again, you can see we've got control over typography, spacing, colors, gradients, and so on. So we could easily come in and control all the padding on this. So at the moment, everything is set to 40 pixels, but we could, if we wanted to, set things based upon pixels, M's, or percentages. So generate blocks is giving us a lot more control over all the different elements using their particular blocks. And this is really quite cool because we can get a lot more creative now and have a lot more control over all those different aspects. So let's just say we wanted to put in a color. You can see now we can choose the background color, text, link colors, hover, border, and so on. Let's choose this option and we'll set it to blue and you can see, boom, it now goes blue. We can say where we want the text now to change color. We want that obviously to be white and bang, there you go. Our text is now white. We can adjust link colors, all those kinds of things. We can do the same then with our button. So let's just select our button. And again, all those options are available to us. Choose our color. So we don't want our background to be blue. We want something that's more complimentary. Let's go for this orange color. 
your text color if you want to change that you can change that inside there your border color if you want to set a border you can set icons inside here so you could upload or use a link to your own svg icon or you can just choose from any of the options that are available as part of generate blocks themselves so really easy to get started with this you can control the position of this we'll say we point the right or the left do you want to remove the text so you just have an icon on its own what icon size do you want the padding you know there's tons of options inside you for controlling all these different layered design options so it makes it much easier to work with if you want to set a gradient we can do that so we can say we'll use a gradient on there and you can see our button now takes on a rather horrible looking gradient but a gradient nonetheless and you can change the color you can set the position all those things so again this is very similar to a lot of the tools you have inside Elemental, Divi, and so on. So this at least gives you more control over how this all works. So once you kind of get used to it, this could quite easily replace, for many cases on simpler sites, a more non-page builder-esque setup, which means that then you should end up with a much faster site without having to load in the additional bloat that a page builder generally tends to bring with it. Now, this is literally just scratching the surface of some of the tools that we can use to make Gutenberg something that actually becomes a usable platform for building sites, pages, posts, whatever kind of layout you want with it. Pair that up with a good, solid theme, and you should have a great foundation. But like I said earlier in this video, if you'd like me to show you how to take the tools I've shown you in this video and create a full-blown page using them, let me know in the comment section below. And if enough people are interested, then I will take a look at creating some dedicated content using these tools. As always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. And if you've made it this far into the video, why not give that thumbs up a quick click? It really does help me out. Now, while you're at it, if you like the content, why not also click the subscribe button and slap the bell icon? But if you didn't find value though, well, you can hit the thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.